Hi floss tubers, welcome to Cat Stitch. I'm your host Cat. Uh, I come from Wellington, New Zealand and um, let's see I've been stitching, just a quick thing about myself, I've been stitching for around about 20 years, self-taught. I learnt to stitch by getting a kit and following those instructions. I'm still a very basic stitcher, I don't do any fancy stitches or anything like that. I only stitch on Ada. Um, when I first started I was able to stitch on like 20, 22 count. Now 14 count is the max that I can stitch on. Um, I'm blind in my left eye, legally blind without the goggles. So I've found that obviously as I've gotten older, stitching's a little harder. I've tried using magnifiers, doesn't, just makes my head a bit wooky, well wookier. Um, so if you um, are like me where you don't use like even weave or linen and you're not big on silks and or you're just starting and that sort of stuff then this might be the channel for you or the show whatever you want to call it. Um, I also don't particularly stitch traditional stitches you know with like sampler style things or or ones that have like blocky characters. Um, and things like that and I very rarely do people there's a lot of things I don't do but there are a lot of things that I do do so today um, I'm gonna basically show you the sort of things I've done over the last couple of years mainly um, before I found Facebook groups uh, I could only buy kits um, really <laughs> with any great ease from our local stores and there wasn't a lot of range um, so when I first started I was doing things like animals and teddy bears and uh, houses and all those sorts of very traditional sort of style and I loved doing them don't get me wrong really enjoyed it but uh, when I found Facebook groups in lockdown 2020 I suddenly had a whole new world open to me where I had access to all these different charts by incredible designers and in themes that I prefer to stitch in. So my main theme that I love stitching in is Halloween-y or gothy or, or fantasy, those sorts of things. And in New Zealand we don't really celebrate Halloween so it's actually really hard to get hold of those sorts of designs. Um, so how happy am I? Um, and then I was also introduced to the incredible world of hand dyed fabrics. I'd only ever really stitched on white or cream or blue or you know the basic uh, Ada colours. I'd never dyed, uh, never, never stitched on anything like a hand dyed piece of fabric and now that's pretty much all I stitch on. Uh, I, I do have some plain white but every time I get some I tend to dye it myself. I'm learning how to um, to dye as well. I like the jar dye method. Uh, I don't think I've got any pieces done. Oh yeah I do. I've got a few pieces in my finished ones with that. Now I am a mum of one, grandmum of two. Um, that there is my boy Bobby McGee. He's an Australian Terrier Shih Tzu and he's gonna... <laughs> yes I'm talking about you. Uh, and he's five and at some point you will see a black cat uh, his name is Shadow Monkey and he's Bobby's brother um, if you don't see him you'll hear him you might see behind me uh, teddy bears yes I am, I'm just very weird I think I mean I love my teddy bears and stuff but I love crime and murder and, and mystery go figure um, but yeah so I have no wall space at all. I rent a room and so everything I own is in my room basically and so I've built shelves to put all my bits and pieces and everything on which means I have nowhere to hang my things which is why I've got so many finished items in a bag basically. I had to upsize my bag last year uh, unfortunately. So basically what my intention this year is to 
fully finished items whether it's to turn them into ornaments or I'm going to start hopefully uh, this month uh, starting a journal because I've seen on some other floss tubes where they've got um, a journal and they've got the smaller pieces actually inserted into it whether it's slipped in under little corners or they've been stuck in so I'm thinking well rather than having them sit in a bag which no one sees if I put them into a journal at least there's access to be able to see them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into it um, I had a small glitch last year where my original Facebook page um, was deleted because apparently I'm under 13 um, and so I had to open up my old a, 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 a different my alter ego basically on Facebook unfortunately all of my notes on all my finished ones I put when I posted and I never wrote them down thinking oh, I'll just go back and get them if I want that information bugger no so um, a lot of the ones that I'm showing you today I can only sort of give you a ballpark figure when I did them and maybe who did them or where I got it from um, and hopefully you know which place I got my fabric from the main place that I get my fabric from is Jody Ree Designs, J O D Y R I Designs, .co .uk or .com. I'll put the link down below once I figure all that part out. Um, Michelle does incredible um, Ada for me, and I got heaps. I, I do honestly. I am in each of the clubs, and I've been in her clubs for the last two two and a half years. I think it is. I've had two lots of Advent uh, ones. I've just signed up for this year's one. Um, they are such beautiful fabrics and I love using them. And she is so lovely. And um, she also does threads, which I have hundreds of those as well. So, um, yeah, I can't recommend her highly enough. Also, Mystic Fabrics in the US. Uh, she does incredible ones as well. It's just the postage to New Zealand. That's a bit of a killer. You know, which otherwise I'd still be getting more mystic ones. That's going to be like my treat fabric that I will treat myself to because I know I'll be spending about twice as much when I have to include the postage. But they are really nice fabrics. Uh, and I have used some of hers and I've still got some of hers. It's like I'm hoarding them because, you know, I don't know when I'm going to get to replace any of them. So I'm loathe to use them even though I know that's really stupid but there you go so let's get into it I'm going to start with some of the small ones um last year I got introduced to just cross stitch magazine um and I subscribed online and they had a Halloween one and I got of course every Halloween one prior to it because they're just really cool and I love all the small ones the small ones um I, yeah, I just I just like having a quick finish a lot of the times. I've got a lot of whips. That'll be another episode. Um, and yeah, those are all bigger designs, which is probably why they're still whips. <laughs> uh, I, I tend to get bored when I'm stitching. Not, not with the design. I mean, I love every design that I'm stitching. I just tend to... There's so many new ones and there's so many that I want to stitch. I've got like 2,000 or so charts and uh yeah I'm, I'm never gonna live long enough really am I so let's get on to this now this was a freebie one um it's on a fabric that I dyed now it's just it was just like an off you know like a scrap piece of fabric which is why the corner is a bit cut off but I'm hoping this will work and can you see that now see the thing about these, now this was supposed to be a black one, it was a freebie by uh, Sabrosa Designs. Um, it was supposed to be like all in black, but I, like I said, Jodie Ree does uh, hand dyed threads. And I also got introduced to other ones like Threadworks and Carrie's Creations and um, Week, Week's Dye Works uh, and, and those sorts of ones. And so the variegated threads have become like, a favorite thing for me to play with and I do tend to switch out threads for them in a lot of my my projects now and I did it with this one so this is using um, Threadworks dies uh, I'm just gonna put it on that side and then we've got another couple of freebie ones which 
I can't remember where I got them from. Um, again, a piece of self-dyed fabric. This is a little witch. Can you see that? There we go. A little witch. And I think I need to add a few beads on for the eyes. I don't French knot. I don't colonial knot. I have watched YouTube videos galore. I'm just an idiot and I can't do them. I can do one, possibly two on a good day, but anything other than that, no. So I just sew the Mill Hill beads on. I get the petite um, and they work fine and at least they're consistent. And then we have the vampire pumpkin. Now, as much as I love Halloween, funnily enough, not a huge fan of pumpkins. I don't know why. I just, yeah, they don't, they don't really feature. Now, um, I don't know where I got this gnome from. And, you know, every, you know how sometimes, you know, you get told you're always going to make mistakes. You just learn from them. I miscounted how close to the edge I was because I started with the fabric round the other way and I didn't realize the edge was quite as close. So this is definitely going into the journal because there's no way I'm going to frame it. But there we go there. Can you see that? Hopefully that's nice and clear. Isn't he gorgeous? Now, again, I, I switched out colours, put the camo in. Um, I believe that is a Carrie's Creation camo and that's just a scrap that I, I dyed uh, as well. Then we go on to this one. It's by Stitchy Crossing uh, from Etsy. And it's called the 5x3 Small Hocus Pocus. Now this one you'll see appear again in another episode because I have an idea of what I'm going to do with this. I'm not going to tell you yet because I don't know if it's going to work. Again, this was a black one. I love doing, I love getting uh, black silhouette designs because that way I really can have fun with a lot of my other threads, my hand dyed threads and things like that. So... There was a small glitch with this one. Uh, I decided to choose my Carrie's Creations Baja Blue. Only had enough to do the outside characters. Ran out for the middle one. Um, I had like one length left of six strands. And I was like, that's not going to do that, that middle one. So I basically just grabbed another DMC thread and mixed it with it. And it, and it worked. Yeah, I think it worked. Um, the fabric is a Jodie Redesigns fabric. It's called Lavender Tea Pancotta. I should put this up here. Look, I've actually behaved myself. Um, I spent a lot of time yesterday prepping all this. Typed up all my notes. Printer died. That's also another reason why there are no... I'm not showing pictures of what the design looks like because I couldn't print them up. So Lavender Tea Pancotta, which was a limited edition one. Um, and that's my lovely Sanderson sisters and yeah you'll see that one on another project that I've got planned I don't often plan uh, the next one is from Night Spirit Studios this was the first one of Night Spirit Studios that I did it was on a piece of fabric that I think I got in a grab bag with Mystic Fabrics uh, like I said I didn't know anything down until the start of this year, so estimations. I used it, um, Etoile or DMC Sparkly um, Etoile threads, which I love using. I hate the metallic ones, but I love Etoile because it's just enough sparkle. Um, so it's called the Gothic, the, the, the Gothic Bat Ornament. Um, now I'm going to be adding some beads to this one, so it's not quite finished. But there we go. It's a little... I'm, I'm still not 100% sure about it. I'm, I'm sort of thinking maybe I should have done a different coloured fabric. <laughs> but there you go. So that's that. And I've just realised I haven't turned my light on. So let's, let's see what happens if I turn it on. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay, we'll just turn it down a little bit. There we go. A little bit too bright in the face. Right, so next up is one from Pickle Barrel Designs um, and on another piece of fabric that I dyed. I have a lot of fun playing with the dye and the jars and stuff like that. So um, it's called Don't Be a Scaredy Cat. It's part of a series of four Halloween designs from memory. Um, this is another one that I did last year. 
So there we go, don't be a scaredy cat. I'm hoping this is actually going to be around the right way. But let's see. I don't want to push any buttons in case I push the wrong button. But, um, so no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to hope, I'll, I'll, you know, because I've noticed on some floss tubes when they hold it up, everything's back to front. I'm thinking, I need to flip it around. Um, the next one is one that I did this year. It's from Etsy again. I, I, it's a dangerous place. This is the Prim Stitcher Shop on Etsy. And with this one, you actually get two designs in the purchase. Um, now, this first one was the smaller of the two. It's called uh, Ye Old Witch's Shop. And it's on a piece of fabric that I dyed. So there we go. So that's that one. It's really cool. Um, I love all the detail and that sort of thing. It's just really, really neat. Um, I'd love to know what I'm going to do with some of these. The other one is, uh, I, I call it Bewitching, because that's the word on it. Um, it's on Jodie Ree Design Fabric Christmas Fair. Fairy? Fa fair? Fa I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, again, from the Prim Stitcher shop uh, on Etsy. And I absolutely adore this one. This was fun to do. So it's one of the, let's go back a bit, cat. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I just, yeah, so I'll just do sort of a close-up sweep by. I've probably done that back to front, but never mind. That's okay. You get the idea, don't you? Um, I really liked doing that. Um, I did the, the, the small one first because... I preferred the small pattern, but once I started doing that one, I preferred that one. Go figure. Now, one that I have a lot of her charts from Etsy is Luba Davies Atelier. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, I love all her quotes. I, I, well, I hate doing alphabets, and I'll very rarely do a sampler. I think I've done two in my life. Um... I love quotes and I love inspirational quotes because I don't know you sort of look at the world and you sort of think you need the inspiration uh, and I saw this one and I thought oh, well, that's, that's a quote in my category um, I'm a bit of a bar humbug Grinch at Christmas time so Halloween is my Christmas uh, which is funny because in New Zealand we don't celebrate it go figure so this is tis the season to be spooky and it's on another Jody Re fabric, Chinese Fighting Fish is what the fabric's called. And it was a limited edition as well. I will tell you when it's a web one where you can get on your, on your page. So I changed um, some of the colours out. If I can get this to sort of hold properly. Yeah, I'm going to have to see if I can edit this to go play the other way around. Okay. <laughs> right. Next one is again one that had two uh, designs in it. It was almost like a zoom in and a and a back look sort of thing. Uh, it's by Waxy Moon Designs. I got them from Etsy again. Now this is the smaller one. Um, I've used Threadworks and Glow in the Dark uh, DMC E940. Uh, I still need to add a couple of beads in the lights on it. And this was actually one of my favourite self-dyed fabrics. I actually really liked this one and I was really bugged that I couldn't remember how I did it. I mean, I, I knew I did it in a jar, but I just couldn't remember which ones I put into it because I was doing so many on the same day. Um, and so I was really bugged when I couldn't remember how I did it. But there we go. So Midnight Manor. Um hard when you've got a small camera there we go and yeah so the, I'm using uh, I've used glow in the dark on that as well so there are some that obviously are going to be a waste of time you putting in a journal when I've got glow in the dark on it and there now this next one was one that I had in my Etsy basket for months because I kept on thinking I really need to get that I really need to get it and I I finally got it and I stitched it up in uh, two days. So I finished this one last month. 
It's by Moon Cult 5000 and it's called Get On Loser and I've stitched it on another Jodie Fabric Ice Dancers which was again a limited edition one but here we go. Isn't she cool? She is really cool. I do love her. Um, I just love the colours and just the words really. Um, I really needed like a wall or two. And then another one that I saw another member of one of the groups that I'm in uh, do was by Harp Seal Designs. And so I used the, another part, the same piece of fabric that I put that one on, uh, the one previously. It's called The Witch on the Broom. Now, the reason I really loved this is because, I don't know, I just, I just loved the imagery more than anything. I did tweak it slightly because I was told she needs bigger boobs. Yeah, I know, go figure. So there we go. So there's my witch on the broom, and yes, I, I added basically like one extra stitch down. So the gap between the bottom of her boob and her leg is a little lower. It's a little shorter. Go figure. Um, so there we go. So I did that one uh, last month as well. I have a challenge this year. I turn 50 in a few weeks and my challenge was to try and stitch 50 designs this year. Uh, so far, uh, my, my goal was by the end of March to have 15 of them done because I knew that April was going to be more focused on a couple of the bigger pieces and, you know, doing fully finished items uh, and trying to, you know, dwindle these numbers down a bit uh, from the piles that I've got. Uh, in my box bag. Um, so, so far I'm at 26 for this year and this is another one that I did last month from the Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2020. No, 2021. Um, it's called Nightmare Before Coffee by Barefoot Needle, Needle Art. So Barefoot Needle Art designed this one and I'm a coffee nut. I'm grumpy cat without coffee. Um, and here we go. So again, on a Jody Ree fabric uh, called Raspberry Matcha Mousse. Um, what I do now on my fabric, see this is how organised I'm getting this year, um, is I'm doing these little tags to go on my fabric. Uh, I was planning on doing another little tag for the other sort of corner or to go with this one which has the information of like what the chart is and when it was done and all that sort of stuff. Printer died. Now, I on Etsy have um, a lot in my wish list piles. I've got albums. And one of the ones that seems to have a lot of charts in there is the Primitive Here. But... I actually came across this one in the Just Cross Stitch magazine 2013, the Halloween one. It's on page 49. It's by the Primitive here and it's called The Spell Shop. Now I used Jodie Ree Spooky Mansion and I changed it a little bit because obviously it was like brown um, and, and very straightforward. I also made a small glitch. Now I don't particularly frog if I can get away with it. I fudge a lot. Um, just makes it more unique, doesn't it? So here's my uh, spell store. Now I switched out um, a variegated, that one there is a Carrie's Creation one, and this one here is a Threadworks. And then that is a Dinky Dye. I also used Black Coal, I think it's called, Black Coral. Um, dinky dye on the black hat and etoile on the cat uh, and the spiders. So I absolutely loved how that turned out. Uh, you will find, oh, and the glitch, the boo-boo that I made. Counting is an issue. You know, it's a lot harder to count to 10 than you may think, especially when you're using variegated thread. When I'm just doing like all one, you know, a solid colour, 
and from having to count, oh, and, and it's like, you know, 20 or 30, I'll go, you know, um, nine stitches that way, then do an X for the tenth, and then that way I can count. When you're doing variegated, not really possible because you need to do individual Xs. So, of course, I miscounted, and then I sort of got distracted and forgot that I was supposed to leave a gap. So the shelf, which one is that? That shelf there is actually supposed to have uh, another two lines to sort of match the other shelves. But I just sort of thought, you know what? I'm just going to leave it <laughs> as that because I don't want to unstitch all that stuff. Um, and I was quite happy with that. It worked out okay. Uh, the next one is another Etsy. It's called Haunted Home Sweet Home from Prim Stitcher Shop. It's stitched on Jody Ree Simnel Cake. And as you'll see, you know, like I said, the majority of my stitches may not, may not be um, a design or, or style that you like, but I'm very much the Halloween-y sort of style. And, you know, each to their own. Um, but it's very hard to find a floss tube. It's all that, that has, you know, ones that I think I would actually want to stitch. Although, just saying, the ones that I've seen and everything like that, they are beautiful, just not my style. So this one is called Home Sweet, well it's called Haunted Home Sweet Home, but obviously it stitches up differently. Uh, and I've used um, Glow in the Dark for the white on this. And there's also a bit of um, the black etoile and uh, Krennic threads are used on it. I I did try to sort of stick to the colours, but one, of the, one or two of the colours I didn't have, so I just grabbed something else. I don't always think about what colours I'm going to replace things with. I just go with what what feels right or what I've got on hand. Uh, although I'm always surprised, and you probably are too, that you might have hundreds of threads, but the thread that you need, you don't have. It's just Murphy's Law. Now, I accidentally came across Bendy Stitchy Designs. Um, uh, it, it was part of a box uh, that I got, and... I actually really quite liked it. I thought this is really funky, uh, very cute, very traditional in that it's quite sort of blocky for the characters. You know, there's no like quarter stitches and, and all that sort of stuff to, to make that curve happen. But I really liked it. So this one um, was the first one of Bendy Stitchy Designs that I did. It's on a self-dyed fabric and it's called Hilda's Hayride. Um, I pretty much stuck to the threads that were needed uh, for it. I still have, um, no, that's actually finished. So I just need to do something with it. So there we go. This hold is Hayride. And I've got to admit, I loved using the Threadworks thread around the border that was called for. I wasn't 100% sure. It never looks the same as on the picture. <laughs> but I actually really enjoyed doing it. And so once I did that one, I had to get another one, and because I've found out now there's a whole series, so guess who's going to eventually get all of them. Uh, so this is Hilda's Brew uh, on the same piece of fabric, and I've got more of the fabric to do, probably about two more of them. So there'll be a series of four, all with the same backing. So here we go, there's Hilda's Brew, and I switched out the white for the glow in the dark, uh, and the black I made Etoile and... The yellow of the windows um, are etoile as well. Etoile? Etoile. Right, so this one is another finish for this year. It's a Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2019, page 67. It's called Spooky Stitching, and it's by Ponoshka. I hope I said that right. And it's on... Um, Jody Ree Cassis and I love using charms as well you know I'll flick them onto a design and I sort of thought there's a, like a spider web thing on it so it needs a spider and I had this whopping great big spider I was trying to work out what to do with I get a lot of my charms pretty much all of them from AliExpress I just do a search for free shipping and go with that and I've got a huge amount that will be discussed in a stash show uh, so this is that one. Oops, here we go. 
Again, using variegated threads. I didn't use any etole on this, I just realised. It's unusual. Okay. Uh, when I saw this one, I knew I had to get it. It was just... And quite frankly, I think there's a heap of us that would need to get this one because we all have whips. Well, not all of us. A lot of us have piles of whips, which tend to go into a box, you know, because new ones get started and then those old ones aren't quite so... You know, yeah. I've got those under my bed. Um, I've got ones that there's a chance I'm going to pick up at some point this year over there. The rest are pretty much in a couple of boxes. Yes, a couple of boxes under my bed. Um, some may get dismantled. <laughs> Never to be done. So that's why when I saw this design, I thought, you got to come home with me and I'm doing you. So this is another pickle barrel design. It's on a fabric that I dyed. I finished it in January this year. And it's called Whip. And there we go. So I have switched out some, you know, the white for the ghosties to the glow in the dark. Uh, using the lovely variegated. Now that one is one of the new ones from Jody Ree. That was an advent one. I think it was uh, No Crackling Fire or something like that. Um, really happy how that turned out. I'm not a huge backstitch fan. Um, so I was really happy that the fence post turned out the way it did. Now, as I said, Luba Davies Atelier earlier um, has a lot of quotes, and I've got a lot of her charts. And when I saw this one, yes, it's not witchy or gothy or Halloweeny or anything like that, but the quote is what called to me. And I probably could have switched out instead of having butterflies to have something, you know, darker. But I loved it, and then I also decided to add on a bunch of charms. So this one. I'm trying to work out whether it's going to get framed or made into like a banner uh, sort of thing. The fabric is from Live and Die in LA, another lovely fabric uh, dyer, um, and she's really lovely as well. I've, I haven't got a lot of her fabric, admittedly, but every piece that I've got, I've loved every single one. Uh, and so this is called When Nothing is Certain, um, especially suitable for nowadays. So there we go. So for those that aren't into Halloween, here's one that you, you, you might like. Um, when nothing is certain, anything is possible. And as you can see, there's an, an array of, if I can get it to stop swinging as I'm bringing it up, there's an array of charms that I've just sort of stitched on there. Just as something a bit different. We're nearly down one pile. This one was a favourite. I so loved doing this. I literally started it and got halfway through, and that was my, on my first day of start. And then I sort of thought, no, no, this is I'm only, I'm only supposed to be starting because it was October, and every day you're supposed to start something. I didn't want to finish it and not have any left at the end of the month, sort of thing. So um, this one is called Halloween is for Tourists, and it's from Etsy from Stitch Sprout is the designer. And again, Live and Die in LA fabric is getting used for this one. Absolutely loved this one. So there we go. And I've even got the little charms that I stitched on. Instead of stitching spiders, I switched them out for some charms. Um, using the etole for the pumpkins and the bat's eyes and threadworks uh, for the um, I Live It All Year. Which I think is really, really cool because I do. Um, I just have the feel of Halloween all year. Uh, I started going through sort of a little bit of a stage where I kept on getting designs that were very like spooky entrances to houses or house, you know, haunted house designs and stuff like that. So I've got a lot of them and I realised I need to stop doing that and actually start stitching some of them. So this one is from Just Cross Stitch magazine. I can't remember. Uh, I think it was Halloween 2018, I believe. And it was near the front of the book. I do remember that magazine. It's by Needle Bling Designs. Um, <clears throat> and it's stitched on, again, Jody Ree. Uh, this one's called Confetti. It was a limited edition for May last year. And it's called Halloween Greetings. 
and uh, I switched out the brown I think in the design for variegated and I believe it is thread works that I've used for this one and I've got the E12 for the black the white is uh, the E90, E940 glow in the dark so there we go hello and greetings I love the little owl you know the little owl down there I just think he's really cute I might have to do a whole bunch more of those owls I was happy about how the spider turned out in that one too uh, back to just cross stitch magazine this one is from Halloween 2015 on page 30 some of my notes are really good uh, this one is by Teresa Mugida and it's stitched on Zen Garden it's a it's a um, it's a Jodie Ree fabric and it's actually one of the web colors so you can actually order this one the threads I used were Dinky Dyes, Etoile, Weeks Dye Works and Glow in the Dark so I really had fun mixing up the threads on this one nice little one nice and simple uh, although I did change the mouse I can't remember what I changed but I know it's not the same thing um, I, I, yeah I changed it a little bit I think I changed the color Oh, and the desk is in a variegated thread as well. Now, you know how I said I don't particularly like doing samplers? I, I, they don't appeal. But I found one I fell in love with, and it was by Joan Elliott called All Hallows Eve. I started it back in 2020. Eyesight was a little bit better back then, and I could do 16 to 18 counts still. But uh, I started it in... January last year I finished the second of the three sections in April last year and then I thought I'm going to try some other ones and things like that and over that time my eyesight got a little worse and I went to pick it up and I could hardly see the squares even though you know and it would be a struggle and I was only able to do like five or ten stitches at a time and I thought oh my god this is just going to take me years so I was at the bottom of the second section so I decided this year instead of me hoping some miracle will mean that I can pick it back up and complete it I thought right I'm finishing it at that point and I'm going to do the third section as a you know as an individual piece so this is uh, All Hallows Eve Sampler by Joan Elliott Design. It's on a mystic fabric. Um, I've used Threadworks, Carrie's Creations, Etoile and E940. Um, which is completely different than... It was all supposed to be all black. Okay, it's a silhouette one. And, you know, it's sort of a bittersweet one for me to look at because it was the first sampler I'd ever done and I couldn't complete it. But I completed it because all the alphabets on there and so is the numbers. I just couldn't do the bottom section which uh, had the tree, which I loved the tree. So that's why I'm going to do that separately on a piece of fabric that I can actually, you know, stitch on. So here we go. So that's her Joan Elliott All Hallows Eve sampler. Um, I, do, I mean, I love the details with the little things. I There's my thread works. That was... Um, I just wanted them to be more ghostly looking than witchy, you know, sort of thing. I wanted it to be like a, a ghosty feel uh, to it. So I was actually really happy with that one. It was one of my favourite pieces from last year. Um, just a little gutted, I couldn't finish it. Okay, so this one is... That's not that one. This one is a freebie. I do remember it was a freebie, I just can't remember where from. And, um, again, I, I did have all my notes on my old Facebook page, but unfortunately that went and so did my notes. That'll teach you, don't just write it on Facebook, put it in your book folder, whatever, okay? Okay, so this one I started in, I think it was one of my October 30, you know, October starts last year, and I finished it in December. So um, I got most of it done. I just have um, a couple of beads to put on the bat on the bat for the eyes and for the witch as well. Put a bit of fluff on it. 
so here we go this is a piece of mystic fabric I believe I said this is why I wish I'd written it down but isn't it cool I love the fabric and it's and it's sparkly I don't know if you can see the sparkle but hopefully you can but it's lovely opal a lot of the fabric that I use is opal I love sparkle um, and chances are if the fabric ain't sparkly I'm using sparkly threads this was another one I found online I don't know where though um, I have this habit of you know just saving it and not noting things down and that's how I've got so many which I really need to organize um, again a, a witch silhouette and I just sort of thought well I've got this uh, this one is the live and die uh, thread that I got uh, I wanted to see what it would, would stitch up like so I thought oh might as well make a witch so I had this silhouette of a witch and um, this is the end result so that's her I'm sort of thinking she needs to have like a phrase or something so if you can think of a phrase I can stitch with her please let me know because um, I have got room to put something on it so that's her and then this one got a lot of comments when I posted it uh, a lot of people liked it and it was just literally a you ever noticed how some charts used to think oh that's the most simple one really quick and easy to do and it takes so much longer than you thought this is one of those I, I have learned that I hate doing borders with this one taught me that um, or at least doing you know all border at once I have now worked out that when I'm going to do a border I need to do it piecemeal so do a little bit of the border to get the positioning and then start on the dang design because having to do a whole border geez it seemed endless so this one is from just cross stitch magazine Halloween 2018 it's on page 108 it's called sleep tight and it's by Linda Medina and it was done on a piece of fabric from a grab bag I think it was with mystic so there we go and it's very sparkly which is why I made it really simple um, I don't know if you can see the sparkle you might be able to but it is quite cute uh, and in case it's backwards now I lay me down to sleep ghosts and goblins were quite a treat but now it's time to say good night the magic fades with the morning light Halloween spirits are always near though the celebration must wait for another year bar humbug shouldn't have to wait at all okay into my second pile hold a second need a coffee I just burnt my tongue okay now this next one I'd like to say is from a just cross stitch magazine but I don't think so I think it was a freebie that I found online um, I just wish I'd written it down because I've only re done this recently uh, it was on a piece of fabric that I had that I dyed because I mean with all the ones that I've done I've realized I didn't have anything with just the word Halloween on so I wanted something simple and I had some um, variegated threads if you can see that if I'm gonna focus um, so the Halloween is both of them are done in Jodie Ree these were actually ones that came in the Christmas advent last year which yeah considering it was a Christmas one so many of the colors of the fabric and the threads would all work so fantastically with my Halloweeny and that sort of themed projects it's really cool so um, yeah so those three are all uh, Jodie Ree threads that I used which is why I just had to dive in this is the right card for this next one okay so this one is just cross stitch magazine Halloween 2020 it's on page 25 it's just a like it's supposed to be all stitched in black so of course I switched out some it's a design by Rona Norrie called October 31st and it's on Jodie Ree fabric key lime pie uh, again a limited edition so you've got to be in the clubs um, <laughs> limited edition fabric now I'm not usually a fan of green but I got to admit the Jodie Ree greens I've been getting I've actually really really liked using um, they work so well with a lot of the designs that I do so here we go and there's my spider again it features again I've used Threadworks 
uh, thread on this one plus some etol just a little bit I think it was uh, and then of course my my lovely Aliexpress spider it looks very realistic when you look at it on the picture um, instead of stitching a spider now this one here uh, from memory I'm, I'm visualizing what the image in the book looked like because I, I get PDFs and it was supposed to have a witch just a single witch flying in the middle the thing is I don't have any witches that big so instead I've got a couple of witches flying away from the house instead this was on a piece of fabric that I dyed no it's not I think it was a grab bag piece of fabric from Mystic so there we go just something simple it was from just cross stitch magazine I just can't remember which one um, it was supposed to be done all in black but again I like switching out to slightly different colors the little witches I got from Aliexpress um, I just search for Halloween charms and then select free shipping and then what was available under that that's what I go with okay so this one still has a little bit of work these these two well this one still has a little work on it just need to add the beads to this one as well in place of the french knots it's called startled superstition uh it's in a just just cross stitch october 2018 magazine page 43 it's by blue ribbon designs and it's on jody redesigned fabric summer pudding which is again <laughs> limited edition um, but at least you get an idea of how cool the fabrics are as you can see, look how sparkly that is oh my god um, so I just need to add some beads to that one and then on the other half of it is again from just cross stitch magazine but this one's from Halloween 2021 page 75 it's called the Halloween tree stitching in the rain is the designer and I actually quite like this so it's a very simple one and I've switched out the white for the glow and the dark, of course. But isn't it lovely? It's just really simple. But it takes longer than you think. Um, typical. This was one that I just finished, like, at the end of, of March. So, last week. Uh, was it last week? Yeah, the 24th. Um, it's called Boo. It's from Just Cross Stitch, you know, just cross -stitch but the page that I printed up was only a part page I only printed up like a you know zoom in of the dang design and I can't find which magazine I got it out of it's on Jody Redesign's cookies and cream that's a website color so you can get this one on Jody Re's site there we go isn't he cute he's just really cute um and again it's those things that you know it just it just looks small look it's not overly huge but boy, it takes longer than you think to stitch the dang thing, especially when there's blocks of a colour or you're having to do a lot of counting. Uh, now, these little ones were all from Just Cross Stitch magazines. Uh, I just don't know. I, again, these ones that weren't noted down, so I'll just do them quickly. So they're just these ones, these are going to just get bunged into the journal, I believe, um, with very little written about them because I don't know much about them. Some might need a couple of beads stitched on, like the eyes for the cat. But see what I mean, like scrap pieces. These are all pieces that were cut off, and I thought, well, I'm not going to waste them. So I managed to squeeze in this one, I've got to admit, I actually quite like. And he's not going to end up in the book. I'm going to find a way to frame him or something, or turn him into something, probably a pillow, because he glows in the dark. And I don't want him to get put away somewhere. So those ones are all from just cross stitch magazines and on scraps of fabric that I dyed. Uh, this one is from just cross stitch Halloween 2018 page 13. It's called RIP Rats in Peace from Food, Fern Ridge Collections. Uh, it's on a, an off cut of fabric again. I think it's the same one that I had the sleep tight poem on. So there it is there. Just a little one and see I put instead of yeah, I put the little skull and um, I put a little star up in the, just move that around, little shooting star up in the top corner there. Again, from AliExpress for those. Just Cross Stitch Magazine, Halloween 2016, page 32. 
This one's called Werewolf Habitat by Elizabeth Spurlock and it's on Jodie Ree Stormy Seas which is a limited edition one. Just so you know with Jodie Ree um, she custom dyes as well threads and fabric so if there's like a color that you're needing or something like that just ask her. Um, with the threads I think you need to order five skeins and honestly you'll use them. I've got so many uh, I actually had to have a slight de-stash of some of them because I've really run out of space and I've got more coming. So um, this one, I <laughs> I quite loved this one. I was like, this is my version of driving in all honesty and how it would probably end up if I got on a broom. Uh, it's from Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2021, page 93. It's called Trouble Driving a Stick. It is a Frony Ritter design. And again, it's on Jody Ree Fabric Stormy Skies. No, it's me Stormy Seas. Um, isn't she cool? I, you know, that's that's me driving a stick, in all honesty. The legs need to be a little thicker. Okay. And on the same piece of fabric as that one, um, from Just Cross Stitch Halloween 21, page 59, Pick Your Poison by Stitchy Fish Designs. I actually like a lot of the designs, so I've actually got a few, um, and this one just sort of tickled me. I don't drink anymore, um, but this one just made me giggle. So there we go. Um, this was the last one I did on New Year's Eve. So there we go. So the last one for 2021 was again a Frony Ritter design from Just Cross Stitch 2019 um, called All Hallows Eve and it's on a, just a scrap of fabric that I dyed. Um, I thought it was really suitable to do it on New Year's Eve. So there we go, just a little one. Deceptively little, can I just say. Deceptively quick. As I said, I'm a coffee drinker intravenous just plug it in I'm all good uh, boo a latte from just cross stitch Halloween 2017 page 51 Frony Ritter designs again this is on Jodie Ree passionberry cake and I love oh my god the colors of the cup on this uh, just to die for again some of the white is glow in the dark I just had to be careful how I used it this time because it's not like the whole ghost is that because it's shaded so um but oh that cup is what drew me to this one it is just love 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 those colors of the cup really really cool design this one just cross stitch 21 or halloween 21 page 78 creepy crossing road sign by linda i'm never quite sure if it's jeanne or jean jenkins uh it's just an off kit off cut of fabric and I just need to add some beads for the cat and the bats. Um, the ghosty is of course in glow in the dark. Thread, I'm just trying to get that in there. It's very hard to do this when you can't actually see the camera. Okay, this one is called Owl and Bats and it is a just cross stitch one, magazine one. Halloween and I do still need to add some beads because I didn't want to do the little flowers I decided I'm going to put beads on it instead but I quite like this one and again this is a Jodie Reeve fabric um I really love this owl I might have to do the owl a couple more times because I really like that owl uh just cross stitch Halloween 2016 page 54 ritual and spells by Teresa Mugida and this is a um when I did it I wasn't sure if I'd made a mistake or not because the fabric's quite dark and so is the design um the more I look at it the more I'm liking it so not that I can do anything about it now it's stitched uh but there we go ritual and spells a beautiful sparkly fabric from Jodie Ree. I was just worried that it might be too dark so you don't see things, but um, everything seems to show up quite nicely on it, if I can get it to go the right angle. 
This one I need to add on a couple of spider charms and some beads for the owl. It's a silhouette, it's called Night Song Silhouette, it's in the Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2018, page 103, stitchy fish design, which is probably why I love it so much. It's on a colour cascade fabric, now they're from Australia. Um, so I just, I haven't quite finished it, and it's all done in uh, etoile, so the black is the 310, the grey is the 3799. E toll, e, e, whatever it is. So there we go. Isn't she beautiful? And she sparkles. <laughs> the whole thing sparkles. I like sparkly. I'm a contradiction. Uh, this one just needs to have a couple of beads stitched on. Now, this one, I got some whisper thread because I got told it makes things look fluffy and, and stuff like that. So I thought, oh, there's a cat on this one. I'm going to do it in the whisper thread. Okay. It's a challenge, and yes, the end result is nice if it's going to be something you're going to be touching, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit fluffy, but it just looks like it's, you know, um, I don't know. Jury is out on using whisper thread because it's a pain in the neck to use, so only use it if you have to. Uh, this is called Ghost in the Graveyard, uh, Just Cross Stitch Magazine, October 21, and it's page 56 by KEB Studio Creations, and it's on Jody Ree Frosted Cookies. Um, just a little one. But, yeah, it's it's really hard if I can get it to... I mean, you can see it is it is a little fluffy, and that sort of thing. But I think it's more um, suitable if it's going to be on like a cushion or, you know, something like that, where you're going to be able to touch it. It's very much a tactile thread to use. Learning curve. Uh, now this one, I, I love the expression on this, and I just had to do it because it looks like my damn cat. Uh, his name's Angry Cat, just cross-stitch Halloween 21, page 7. It's by Stitching in the Rain, and it's on a piece of grab bag fabric from Mystic Fabrics. Look at that cat. Oh my god. Just the look on its face. That is so Shadow Monkey. Really, trust me. At some point you will meet him somewhere. Um, now this one is a Frony Ritter design. It's called Ghoul Whip Hot Chocolate from Just Cross Stitch Halloween 21, page 57. Uh, and these two are on Jody Ree Passion Berry Cake. I got a couple of pieces of it, even though it was limited edition. I just really liked it. Um, so there we go. I just need to add some beads uh, down here instead of doing the little French knot that I was going to do. And like I said, I don't do French knots. Um, and again, I love how these colours blend so beautifully. I just sort of think they're really, really cool. And then one that I, I was going to do for my boo, because that's what I call him, um, is Hanging With My Boo. It's just cross-stitch, Halloween 2018, page 63. Stitchy fish designs, of course, on the passion berry cake. I just need to add some beads for the bat. And that's that one. Very cool. Very much like that one. Let's want that straight. I spent five hours ironing yesterday. Uh, here's a tip. If you're like me and you just love stitching and you don't particularly like finishing any objects and stuff like that, before you store them, iron them because you don't want to have to stitch, you know, to iron like a hundred of the dang things when you want to do something with it. Um, now, on to one of my favourite designers is the Witchy Stitcher. I discovered her in 2019 when she released Monster House. I originally did that one, uh, Universal Monster House, I should say. I, you know, I originally did that for myself, but my daughter decided she wanted it, so I don't have that one to show you because she's got it hanging on her wall. It's actually one that I framed, go figure. I don't tend to frame anything. So I have started doing that one again with a few extensions and changes, but I haven't actually worked on that for like, I don't know, 
eight months, nine months. So that's going to have to get pulled out this year. But I'll show you that as one of the whips uh, in another episode. But witchy stitcher designs, I have got oh no, one or two. Oh, sorry, monkey. Um, and this is one of my favourites of hers. It's called a stitcher haunts here, and it's on fabric that I dyed myself. And what are you doing, Bobby? Um, he's wanting a treat. That's that's the problem. He's thinking he should have a bone or something. Um, and I went with because the the design comes with two options of how you get you know the colorings and stuff like that and I went with the more colorful option which is unusual for me but I really quite liked it I just need to again add, add on a few beads uh for the french knots but ta-da isn't it gorgeous this one I am actually going to frame because um I can I can see this at some point going up on a wall if I get any wall space. Um, hello, Bobby. Hi. Again, by Witchy Stitcher, one of her newer ones for, you know, Halloween. Um, I think it was last Halloween. Uh, no, it's not Halloween. Valentine's. I think it was last year that she did this one. Uh, it's called Haunt Me, and it's on Jodie Ree Oak King, um, which is, again, a limited edition, but I love the colours of this. It's absolutely lovely. Really, really nice. Stop looking, Bobby. And of course, the ghosties uh, glow in the dark. Bobby's wondering who I'm talking to. That's the problem. He's thinking, you're not talking to me, and there's nobody else in the room. Um, the next one, I giggled when I saw this one. I thought, oh yeah, i got to get that one. It's Bitchcraft. If you don't like the language, sorry, but that's the name of it. Uh, it's on... Into the Mystic 14 count. Um, thinking that's CCF fabric. Um, yeah. CCF fabric. And there we go. I sort of changed the colours up a little bit. Um, they are sparkly. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. There's some sparkle in there. But I, I really quite liked that. So that's Bitchcraft. I just want to say the name of it a few times. And then from Witchy Stitcher, Witchy Stitcher again. Again on Colour Cascade Fabric. I put a spell on you. And this was one that I did last year. It's very girly. <laughs> Can I just say... It's not quite as dark as I was going to do it originally, uh, but there you go. Um, I think the plan was I was going to give that to my granddaughter. I am starting to get the uh, season ones from Witchy Stitcher as well. So this is the first one. This is Beltane that I did. I've now got Yule to do. I know they're not in the right time of year, but you know. Uh, it's Colour Cascade fabric for that one. It's all just a bunch of hocus pocus. I'm sort of, now that I'm looking at it, I'm sort of a smidgen miffed that I went and used the light grey variegated. I should have gone with the dark grey because um, it's not really showing up as well as I'd like. But it's on a Jodie Redesigned fabric. I'm just not quite sure what the name is. So it was a website fabric, I think. But there we go. It's all just a bunch of Hocus Pocus from Witchy Stitcher Designs. And please remember, if you have a favourite seller on Etsy, check out to see if they've got their own site or if they sell elsewhere because that way they don't get gouged so much for the price of the chart. Um, the next one is... A Doreen Jones, uh, as I got from Etsy, speaking of, um, Halloween Silhouette Set of Four. Now, obviously Silhouette is all in black, and of course, I didn't do it all in black. Um, I used Threadworks and Etoll on it, um, and I, when I was stitching around the outside, I was thinking I'm making a major mistake here, this is not going to work. But fortunately... 
that worked out okay. This is on an off cut of fabric that I had, and I think it's from Live and Die in LA. But look at that. It's 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 sort of, you know, I was actually quite <laughs> happy with how that worked out, which surprised me. Um, although, having said that, a lot of the times when I start using the variegated threads, uh, I question it the whole time that I'm stitching it. It's like, should I be doing it in this colour? Or, you know, should I be doing it in, in, in the original required colour? Um, oh, here's one more witchy stitcher. It's Witchcraft. And there we go. There will be another witchy stitcher in my bigger ones. Isn't that cool? Um, again, there's a couple of beads I need to just add on, I think. I'll have to have a look at my notes for that one. Now this next one is, again, an Etsy purchase. There's actually two designs in this one as well. Um, so this is the other one I showed you earlier, the Midnight Manor, which is the small version, like the zoom in on the house. This is the bigger version. Um, and it's yeah midnight manor it's a large one by waxing moon designs this is on fabric that i dyed and i was really shocked that it actually worked as well as it did go figure and i've used threadworks and sulky glowy thread um i got a sample pack of six i think of the sulky glowies and they actually stitch up okay but i'll go through that with you in another episode so here we go it looks quite cool. You can just make out the ghosties. If I do zoom in. Um, yeah, I was actually quite happy. Again, this is one that I was doing the thread works thread, the variegated, down the trees and along the front. And the whole time I was thinking, oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. And then by the time I finished, I actually really liked it. Now, remember how I said I'm not big on samplers? Well, because... I hadn't actually finished the All Hallows Eve sampler. I figured, you know, I'll just do a small one and still Halloween theme. And I found this one on Etsy by Primitive Betty. Um, it's called the Primitive Cross Stitch Sampler. And I'm doing it on Colour Cascade fabric. Um, I think one of the things about samplers that I don't understand is putting somebody else's name on it. Or, you know, a date well before. It's, it's not... I, it's not this is definitely not going to be regarded as an heirloom piece but I can now say I have properly done a sampler um, I just need a couple of beads to be added on like one for the crow's eye and I've stitched on some spiders instead of stitching the spiders but otherwise there we go so that's my first officially my first sampler um, it was quite interesting to do and I, you know, I really should research to see who this person is supposed to be because I'm like, who's Helga Watts back in 1843 in which country? Um, but I don't know if I'll ever, you know, do anything with it. Right, back to the Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2017, page 79 is called Batty Halloween. The design is by Anna Lee Waite Designs. Um, I've done it on the Jodie Rees Simnel Cake, limited edition one, and the buttons, I got the buttons from AliExpress, so um, I've used the required colours, I, I don't remember changing out the colours for this one, there we go, you can see the buttons, um, I just, you know, I got a couple of mixed packs, I don't know if you saw that one, but it's, you know, it's quite a basic one, um, this one, it's another just cross stitch one from Halloween 2020. My writing was so bad last night. Page 51. Stitchy Fish Designs. Yet again, I, I don't know, there's just something about their designs that I love stitching. It's called Time to Fly and I've stitched it on Jodie Ree Iced Sherbet. Um, it was, you know, I've obviously switched out some of the colours. You'll see that in the broom and also in the moon <laughs> and in the skirt of the witch. But I love her. So I sort of switched out a few colours and just had fun with my variegated threads in this one. Um, 
I sort of find that with the variegated threads, whenever I come across a design that just has bits and pieces that I can switch out, it gives me a chance to try out some of the variegated that I've never used, or some of the hand dyed ones that I haven't used in any project that just looked nice when I got them. Um, okay, we wish you a happy Halloween um, from the Halloween Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2020, page 93. It's by Needle Bling Designs. And I've done it on Jodie Ree Millionaire's Shortbread Limited Edition. I just need to add some charms to it. And I'm trying to work out where I was I going to add the charms. But I think the idea was, was that I was going to turn this into a cushion. And on each of the corners there's going to be a charm. So if I ever figure out how to make one. Um, so there we go. And it's on sparkly fabric. I don't know if you can see that or not. Just so you know. I don't edit. Uh, that is just not in me. Now, Doreen Jones, I, uh, if you have a look on Facebook, you'll see her most, you know, her latest one is, is a garden, like a, a bee cell, a stitch along. Um, in 2020, I did the garden cell. Um, and that was also the year that my dad passed away. And the lovely people at the rest home who cared for him so much um, and looked after him so wonderfully I wanted to do something to thank them for it so I slightly changed uh, Doreen's design by adding in an extra section down the bottom with just the words thank you um, and I have got to go and get this framed the reason they haven't got it yet is just it's been it's been I don't know, it's just been really hard acknowledging that he's gone, I think. Um, so I del I'm delaying everything and anything to do with my dad. But there we go. So here we are. And it is stitched on a piece of fabric that I got from sewitall.com. Uh, .com.au, so I got the Australian one. But they're also in the UK. And it's just... Um, I'm sure that on here somewhere there's like a info thingy it must be on another piece oh here we go it's just a 14 count it's called cloud lilac um, and a lot of it is sparkly because I use the etol again on a lot of this but um, I just added this section down the bottom I just used the flower from up there and brought it down here created the word thank you and fit it in um, yeah, so that's got to get done. Now, um, there are going to be some older ones on in, in this next lot because I just sort of went through and grabbed out a bunch out of my bag. Um, this is the first time I've done anything like this particular design and I've got to admit I quite liked it and I might do this design again but in a different colour. Um, it was it was challenging enough. I've never done black work before, and apparently this is called red work. Is that you know? So if I did it in green, it would be green work or what? But um, I really really enjoyed doing this, which surprised me because I hate backstitch. But apparently backstitch and black work are completely different things. I'm like, okay. Um, so there we go. It's a bit bigger than I remembered it being, quite frankly. I didn't think it was this big. But, yeah. Um, I spent five hours ironing yesterday. I was putting interfacing on a lot of stuff. I know you don't need to put it on um, a lot of things, especially if you're going to frame them. But because I don't know if anything's actually going to get framed and they might end up getting just made into like wall hangings and stuff, I thought, well, since I've got the stuff out, I might as well do the whole lot. Um... Look at this. This is big. Okay. Uh, I got a triptych kit. Never done anything like it before. And I don't think I'm going to do anything like it again, in all honesty. Uh, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I do love how it ended up and things like that. But there's no... I mean, hello, I have no wall space. Why? What was I thinking when I did this? I don't know. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. And I think it was on special. I can't even tell you anything about the design or the designer. Um, 
it was like one of those no brand no name branded ones and and stuff and it was it was cheap as chips and and in an op shop so um it was before i got my job <laughs> where i could afford to actually spend money on cross stitch stuff so um i mean it's a beautiful scene but i really don't know what i'm going to do with it it's definitely not my style so chances are someone's going to get it in their christmas box i don't know um so i'm just going to see if i can I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so here we go. And it's like, but wait, there's more. Um, <laughs> my arms aren't long enough. So there we go. i got to admit, I like the last last section. I just like the colours in it. Um, it's not small. And I, I, I wasn't sure if I should... <laughs> Because it, it says in the, in the instructions, I do remember it saying that you can either um, stitch it like this or you can stitch it all as one. And I'm kicking my, you know, and I think my thought process was I'd have an easier time framing each individual one than one big long one. Um, but I don't think I left enough space between each to actually give it enough of a thing to frame. Um, on, on, especially on the middle section, it's going to have the shortest margins because it'll be short on both sides. Um, I'll show you what I'm pulling out of this, or what I'm, well, I'm, what I'm pulling all these ones out of soon. Okay, so this one, now these ones I don't really have any info on. I'm just going to have to estimate um, based on memory. So this is Lakeside Needlecraft. Um, they've got a bunch of different Halloween cells all sort of long ones and stuff like that and I've, I've got I think I've got all of them I've only done two of them so far though so this is one of them happy Halloween um it's not exactly the same as the pattern you know my counting skills have off days obviously so here we go now this fabric is uh, the CCF the color cascade fabric uh, it works beautifully with this, admittedly. Um, and I love I love all the detail and the colours. I don't know if I've got this in the right place. I hope I do. Have I got it too high? No, it's all good. Okay. We're still there. Okay, actually I'm going to roll that one back up. Uh, I've learnt that if I roll these bigger ones up, then I don't get so many ruddy creases in them. So, like I said, I'm still learning. I don't follow the rules and the instructions. I don't wash my items. Um, I don't remember my granny washing her ones when she did them. Um, and so I just, I just, I don't. Um, some people do. I'm not one of them. You know, there is, I think the thing is, is that I suppose it depends on why you're stitching. If you're stitching just for the pleasure of stitching, then make your own rules up. You don't need to follow other people's ideas or what the right thing is. Honestly, the backs of the dang thing, hello, are you, are you mounting them so the back faces frontwards? No, so who cares? I do understand the need for, um you know, trying to keep it as neat as possible and not all lumpy and stuff, because if you're going to frame it and stuff, it makes it easier when it's flat. It does. But I'm not OCD about it. You know, my the backs of mine, I I, I watch, I, I look at other people's and the back looks nearly the same as the front. And I'm like, ah, that's not mine. And I've been doing it for 20 years and I still don't get any you know result like that. So don't stress over the back. Don't stress over the rules. Find your way of doing it where you can enjoy it rather than feeling like you're having to do it in a way that doesn't make it feel smooth and natural for you. Um, doing cross stitch should be fun and it should make you feel good and it should be a natural way of doing things. Same with the taste of, of, of fabric that you choose or the designs that you choose. It's all individual choice and embrace it be you you know much to the beat of your own drum anyway another lakeside needle craft so this is the other one i've done um now this is the one i now i i just got the sulky glowy threads the pack 
And so of course I wanted to try them all out. So I learned that because I stitch on 14 count, it says that you can just do a single strand, but I found I had to do three strands on with, with the Sulky Glowy for it to actually cover, give it coverage. So I was a little miffed by that, but I do love the fact that now I've got glow in the dark on this one and it's not all white. That's why I liked the Sulky Glowies because it means I wasn't doing a whole bunch of white stitching. Um, so here we go. So this is a Spooky Halloween. I'll just do the glide across first. And then we'll bring it back so you can try and see the whole thing at once. It's really hard because it's a long one. Here we go. Although it's not the longest one I've got here. Um, I love these Halloween designs from Lakeside Needlecraft. They've done an incredible job with these designs. Um, I really want to do the candlestick one from last year. And I'm like, crikey, they'll probably be due to do another one soon. Because um, the year is just going so fast. And I'm just like, no, let me catch up. And either that or make it really not as good as the last four years or five years has been. Um, now this is one of my early ones. I keep on thinking it's a, dimen a dimensions one. Um, again, this is when I did kitting, you know, kitted projects only. Uh, I think it's called The Artist. Really should try and find out more about these ones. So again, it's on, I think it's on 18 count. When I could do more detailed work and, and stuff like that. And I really love it. Um... I have got some framed pieces. Um, my mum, I, I, you know, I, I give them to her unframed <laughs> as a gift. Uh, feeling that to frame a piece is a very personal thing because it goes, you know, you're choosing what you're going to have in your decor and or decor, depending on how you want to say it. Um, so I'll leave it up to you. Now, bothy three, uh, bothy over in the UK um, have some incredible designs. And I've got quite a few of their kits, and <laughs> there's a few of them whips, and there are a few full kits. I'm a huge fan of the Gorgeous Girls, but unfortunately I discovered Bofi when Gorgeous discontinued. So I didn't have a chance to get many of them. Um, but I do have a few, and I have managed to get another couple from, you know, resellers or, you know, bargain places and stuff like that. Um, so I've got, a, you know, I've got about six or seven of those to do. I've got three whips of those all in various stages but this one um i actually did four of the fairy tale ones but three of them have been rehomed and i've only got this one left so this is the only one i'm showing you but there we go it's called i'm late um and i just and even though it's pretty much all in black it's not a boring thing to stitch, and you, there's still room for error in regards to counting. Um, in fact, I'll be surprised if any of my cross stitches actually have the correct count in them, in all honesty, because uh, the majority of them won't. Um, this one was another kit. Uh, I love dogs. Um, I think this is number two. Well, number three in the series so I'd like to get the other ones um, oh my gosh how far back do I have to go okay there we go there we go um, okay there's a downside to doing these long ones and that at least if they're high I can hold them up <laughs> so there we go so it's I love dogs again another one of my past ones I don't when I started cross stitching um, because it was just for my own pleasure and stuff like that never thought I'd be sharing it with others and things like that I never noted things down I never thought to take photos of it I just gave them away um, I've given away quite a few um, but there's one that I've definitely kept and it was my first ever one this is the one that I learnt how to cross stitch on I probably could have chosen a simple basic one, but no, <laughs> I 
I decided to choose one that would challenge me. The writing down the bottom is not included in the kit. Uh, I just added that so I knew what the heck the dang thing was. And I haven't even finished doing that. So I think I got bored doing the outline of the words that I wrote you know, the, the words that I wrote down the bottom. So this one is probably around 20, 21 years old. Um, and it was my first ever cross stitch that I'd ever done. Um, here we go. Yep, could have chosen something easier, Kat, but yeah, I, I learned pretty quick. So Mountain Lion, again, I'm thinking it's Dimensions because that was the, ma the main brand that we had available um, when I first started. Right. Then there's another oldie, another kit. Um, you see what I mean about the designs that we have available over here? Not exactly my normal theme now, but um, there are still some from back then that I really loved. So follow your dreams. Again, it's a phrase and it's and it's all about, you know, inspirational. And I like those. So there we go. Roll that one back up. So this was me trying to be as organized as I could and then everything sort of went wrong this morning. Um, this one here is another kit. I keep on thinking it's called the sewing room, but it was a long time ago. I think this was in the first few years um, of me stitching. So I just loved the patchwork and I loved the colors um, and that sort of thing. So again, I was still learning the finer details of that one. Um, here's another oldie. Not really an oldie, but another kit. Take the clip out, cat. Um, this one, you know how sometimes you'll get a kit and they don't separate the threads. They have them all in a, in a hank or, you know, like all tied together. And it says how many of each thread there should be and all that sort of stuff. Well, because my eyesight isn't wonderful, I can't always differentiate when the threads are really similar in colour. Um, you know, sometimes it's a happy accident, other times not so much. So, <laughs> it wasn't until I saw somebody else's that I realised, oh, whoops, definitely didn't do it that colour. Um, that explains why I nearly ran out of the colour that I was using, you know, for sort of thing. So... But fortunately, I had just enough to finish doing what I needed doing. And as a coffee yummy, um, I had to do this one. It's just really cool. Wasn't a fan of all the backstitch, but you need the backstitch to make this pop. Um, there was no alternative. So there we go. A little bit of... Yeah, so if anybody... Has... Hello, monkey. So if anybody's done this one, they might spot <laughs> the different colour mug. Um... I'm not going to point it out. I think it still worked out okay. So we're just going to leave it at that and not say anything else about that one. Um, just a few more left. And then I'm going to show you a couple more bits. Um, and then we'll sign off. So this one here. This was probably one of my favourites from the last couple of years. Um, monkey, what are you doing? Um... Again, Stitchy Fish Designs. It's called Stitchcraft. And I made total use of Jodie Re threads. Nothing else but Jodie Re threads. Although, actually, no, I lie. There's a little bit of um, satin thread, I think it is, to give it a little bit of sparkle on one point. But I absolutely loved this design. It's one of my favourites of all time from Stitchy Fish. And I loved how it, again, this was one that I was stitching. I ran out of the thread. Now, I knew I wasn't going to have enough to do the entire witch. So, instead of her wearing a dress, she's sort of wearing a two-piece. But it worked. So, here we go. Really, really happy with that. It was a great... 
um, tester for how to use or how to stitch with variegated to get different um, outcomes from it. And there goes the cat. He's quite antisocial. Unless he wants something. Hey, monkey. Um, this is one that I did for my dad and I found in his things when we were cleaning everything up. And it's just life is good. And I thought, well, actually, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to zoom through this one because I don't have any information about it. I can't remember where I got it. I know it was a cat. Um, and I'm probably going to see if I can turn that into a banner. Uh, well, that's going to be really hard because it's long. I mean, if it was, you know, up and down, then it wouldn't be quite so bad. But having it long is quite annoying. This one was a ruddy nightmare, can I just say? I don't know what I was thinking when I bought it. It seemed like a good idea and it looked quite simple and very straightforward. It's, I think it was called something like clouds or sky or, you know, something like that. Um, the funny thing is, I don't know which is the right way up in all honesty. It could be either way <laughs> because it works. But I'll show you what I mean. There you go. Never doing anything like this ever again. Oh my God. Okay, so there's that way. Or we can flip it up. And it still works, I think. Um, way too much blue, you know, just. And again, this was um, an 18 count, so thank God I'm never doing one like that again, because that would just be painful. Right, a couple more. Now, Tiny Modernist. A lot of you would have probably stitched tiny modernists whether it's one of their biscornus or just their little ones and stuff like that or done one of their cells i've done the ouija cell it took me a while because i like a year behind i've got the i've got last year's one to start yet um but i changed uh, a lot <laughs> this is the only ready thing i have frogged as much as i as i did because um I really miscounted down the bottom. It's like it's it's the biggest dread for anyone cross stitching um, to get the border, and you get down to the bottom, and you're not going to meet up, and you're like, ah, um, yeah, I experienced that, and I was just going to frog it somehow, but then I decided, oh look, now we'll fix this. So again, this was me using hand dyed threads um, to give it some something a bit different, and. Um, obviously glow in the dark on there as well. I'm going to have to come back here. So there's my Ouija Sal from Tiny Modernist. I'm just going to see if we can zoom in a little bit. Here's my house. I, I really liked how my house turned out because I wasn't sure. And my witch. Um, but yeah, I was, I don't know how that looked on camera just then and I ain't going to edit it. So, oops, if I did that wrong, sorry. I so need more coffee. And my last one, which again, this one's for my daughter. Um, and of course it's Witchy Stitcher. Now, the reason I'm not even thinking of keeping this one I'm not a horror movie fan. I don't watch them. I don't like all the blood and gore and stuff like that. And yet I watch a lot of crime, true crime, go figure. Um, I, I, you know, so a lot of these characters, it was quite a struggle for me to do this one because I didn't recognize the characters. So I couldn't really connect um, with them, but I knew that my daughter would know them because she loves horror movies. So I thought, okay, well, we're going to do the chopping mall for my daughter. And that's what I did. I didn't really change anything in it. I pretty much stuck to the design because I didn't know how to or what I could incorporate with the characters apart from what I saw um, others had done and, and that sort of thing. So it took me longer than it probably should have. It took me longer than Universal Monster that's for sure because I just it was hard when you don't connect with the piece that you're stitching it's a re it's, it becomes a bit of a chore to stitch it. But I love the design as a general as a general rule. Her designs are so well thought out and they're so well mapped and things like that that, you know, Witchy Stitcher is one of my go-tos for designs um, 
and that sort of thing when I'm wanting a specific style uh, and she's got so many different ones out now so here we go here's my chopping mall um, so I'm going to get that framed up and that's going to be my daughter's birthday present this year I think maybe that'll be one of my finishes this month now you would have heard me say at the beginning that I only stitch on Ada people comment all the time oh look there's another one what's this one um, people comment all the time about how easy even weave is and I did I tried to use even weave everyone's like you know two over one and I got you know one of the biggest even weaves and stuff like that and I, I just couldn't I couldn't do over two I could only do over one I my brain just would not accept that it can skip one and go on to you know the next one and having to die your oh, yeah diagonals didn't work so um, I'll show you a little sample thing that I did attempting to do it and that's using a magnifying as well because there is no way I could see the holes otherwise I just found this one um, this is another Etsy one and I don't have any notes for it it was at the bottom of my bag but I just finished this one and it's on a piece of fabric that I dyed as well um, it's called uh, Happy Halloween I just can't remember the designer I'm so sorry um, but there we go and it cool I believe this one is a Ukrainian designer I think that's why I got it um, that's gonna drive me nanas because I thought I had all the info for all the ones that I Let me just have a quick peek at these just so you know I got this from a lady in Australia a tote bag I've got a couple of them so I've got this one um, and when I start showing my whips I'll be showing you the project bags that the lovely Judith Livingston in New Zealand has made for me and oh my god it's like you just can't get one you really can't they are gorgeous and I'm so glad that she knows how to sew a straight line because I sure as heck can't so as I was saying in regards to the even weave <laughs> um, I thought I'm gonna just try and do just a simple square and I tried doing the two over two you know the one over two sort of thing because I had a piece of fabric, some I, I'd, I'd gotten a piece of fabric in a grab bag from Mystic and I saw that it was this even weave and I thought okay well let's give it a go um, there's a part of me that really wants to keep trying with this one I've kept the thread with it and stuff like that because I really would like this little design and it's but the thing is because I've had to do it one over one it is tiny um, which could work on a little easel I suppose so I'll just show you such a lovely piece of fabric too so and as you can see there's a heck of a lot of it well for me but there you go that's that's what I've done using a um, Jodie Re thread it's been like that 18 months um, even weaves not for everybody I know that some people might say it's really simple to use for some it is and the work that can you know that gets done on it is incredible it makes half stitches a lot easier um, and, and that sort of thing good on them those that can do it I'm not one of them um, right so that's mainly done in the last two years two to three years basically lockdown stitching uh, I do work full-time but my stitching will be slowing down because I'm starting study this week doing two certificates so uh, my evenings won't be spent stitching they'll be spent studying instead um, although I'm sure I'll be stitching as well there are a couple more things I'll just show you and I've got them right here I said earlier I don't really do people and I don't but as soon as I saw this design by Bella Filipina I fell in love Bellatrix just represents everything I love in an image of of a, of a person in cross stitch um, I have finished stitching her I haven't got her off the frame sorry so you're only gonna see a part of her at the top but the fabric that I've used for her is uh, Father Time by Mystic Fabrics it's my first time ever using a scroll frame so I'm adjusting to that and I'm not sure how I like it yet because it's trying to find the right way to stitch 
um, but she just needs to have the beads and back stitching done and then she's all done uh, I started her last year so the goal is to finish her this year and then my next big project um, is going to be this one here which is the cat and the witch I just thought it was really really cool really loved it um, by Tatiana Baboshko hopefully I said that right got it off Etsy and I'm using uh, Black Friday fabric because I can't stitch on black either so this is as close as I'm gonna get so it's called Black Friday by Jody Redesigns so there we go uh, sorry it's taken so much of your time up I hope you have fast forwarded over a lot of it um, my future ones aren't gonna be as long because I'm sure as heck not gonna have that much to show you but I'm hoping that in the future I'm gonna do ones that have my whips stash haul whatever you want to call it accessories and just to sort of chat about some of the ideas and encourage you to just have fun with it don't take it so seriously I mean if you're entering competitions and stuff fine you want to put that pressure on you go for it but just enjoy it um, create something fun and magical you know uh, I did actually say to my daughter once what are you gonna do with all my stash when I die and she goes I'll burn it I put that post on Facebook and one of the women said like heck <laughs> you know actually it was a lot more stronger language so those are some of the things that I hope to do coming up they will be shorter um, but if you've got any questions or any comments or anything like that please let me know and um, we'll see how we go and Hopefully there weren't too many bloopers in this and you actually saw everything enough. Um, and hopefully my printer will be fixed by next time. It'll be really good. So catch you later. Toodles. <laughs>